हेलो एवरी वन होप यूर सेफ एंड साउंड एट योर होम्स एज द लॉकडाउन कंटिन्यूज आई होप दैट वी कुड कीप आर क्लासेस कंटिन्यूइंग एंड सो आई एम अपलोडिंग दिस वीडियोज टू कवर आर सिलेबस आई ट्राई टू पुट अ वीडियो एवरी अल्टरनेट डेज वी कैन हैव डिस्कशंस इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन क्वेरीज वी कैन डिस्कस देर सो इन दैट वे वी कैन कवर अप द सिलेबस इन स्पाइट ऑफ द लॉकडाउन ओके सो विल स्टार्ट Uh, in the lectures, we had finished until unit five. We had finished up with Fibonacci series method. We had finished up with golden section search method. That was the end of fifth unit. So today we'll start with sixth unit, which is about multivariable optimization. So fifth unit was single variable optimization. Sixth unit is about multivariable optimization. So what is optimization? Let's just go back into the basics a little bit. so mathematical optimization is the selection of best element uh, with regard to some criteria from a available set of alternatives we had discussed this in the previous unit what we are doing in optimization is we are trying to find the best case scenario by trying to find the best answer uh, in the given set of options that we have there may be multiple options that you have multiple answers that you have that can actually solve a problem but which one is the best that is what we are trying to find in optimization now optimization problems arise in all uh, different fields of uh, engineering in computer science they are also found in economics uh, in multiple fields and hence this optimization has been a very interesting subject in mathematics for centuries and there are different methods found by different scientists to solve them uh, multivariable optimization is the optimization of a function that has two or more variables so we saw single variable optimization in which the functions were just defined in one single variable like x multivariable optimization on the other hand will have more than two two or more than that variables okay you can have x y z and so on going forward uh there are two types of multiple multivariable optimizations that we are going to study one is called as without constraints uh when i say constraints i mean there are limits okay so you have uh, your variables two variables they will have certain limits that they can lie between certain range so that is called as constraints okay so multivariable optimization we are going to study in two different ways one is without constraints and one is with constraints what are the so let's have a look at what a multivariable optimization function looks like so now consider this following unconstrained nonlinear problem so you have minimize a function of capital x where x is nothing but a function which contains the following variables x1 x2 x3 up to xn it can have any number of variables and they all lie within the range of real numbers now the above problem can be solved this be basically be solved to find the values of x1 x2 up to xn such that these values will minimize the value of the function so that is nothing but your optimization problem now what are the methods that are used to solve this problems so the first method is always called as the classical method the same thing that we studied in single variable optimization as well classical methods after that we are going to look for brute search method and the thirdly we are going to look at gradient methods so these were the categories that we used in single variable optimization as well for multivariable optimization also we are going to use these three methods today we are going to have a look at the classical method now classical method as you know uh requires two conditions one is necessary condition and the second one is sufficient condition so what is necessary condition it's very similar to that of the single variable optimization so if you have function of x1 x2 up to xn which is nothing but capital f of capital x okay so if it has an extreme point at x is equal to x star and if the first partial derivatives of f of x exist then uh if of x exist at x star then we can say that the partial derivatives of uh partial derivatives of function at x star with respect to different variables is equal to 0 this is very similar to the condition that we had in the single variable optimization as well the first order derivatives were equated to 0 here instead of the complete derivatives we have partial derivatives because there are a number of variables so all those partial derivative should be equal to 0 so that is the necessary condition the second is the sufficient condition now what are the sufficient conditions at extreme point if a hessian matrix is positive definite then it is relative minimum 
The second condition at extreme point, if the Hessian matrix is negative definite, then it is a relative maximum. Third one, at extreme point, if the Hessian matrix is neither positive nor negative definite, then it is a saddle point. Now, there are different terms here which you may not have understood. So, Hessian matrix is a new term. Positive definite, negative definite, these are new terms. Saddle point is again a new term. So, we'll look at all these things uh, in the next slide. All right. Hessian matrix. What is a Hessian matrix? So, Hessian matrix is the matrix of second order partial differences and it is given by this entire matrix. In the first row, you have delta uh, daba f square upon uh, daba x1 square. The second term is daba f square upon daba x daba uh, daba x1 daba x2 up till daba f square upon daba x1 daba xn and so on. And similarly, the second row will have daba f square upon daba x2 x1 uh, daba f square upon daba x2 square and so on. All right, this is nothing but the Hessian matrix. So you start with constructing the Hessian matrix. Uh, we looked also at positive definite and net. so what are these? Uh, to understand that we have to come up uh, we have to understand a concept called as principal minor matrices. So what is principal minor minor matrices? You may have studied them in your uh, mathematics class, but just a revision if you have studied. If not, you can have a look. It's very simple concept to understand. If we have a matrix, if your Hessian matrix now consists of A1, uh, A11, A12, A13, it's a 3 by 3 matrix. So in that case, the first part, this term here, if you take the matrix only of that term, that is called as your first principal minor. Okay, so that is H1 is nothing but the matrix of A1, A2. Next part, if you consider the next square matrix, this four terms that is nothing but your second Hessian matrix and then if you consider the next square matrix that can form this entire term is your third Hessian matrix so if your number of principal uh, minor matrices depends upon your Hessian matrix the order of your Hessian matrix if it's a three by three order you will have three Hessian, uh, three pr uh, principal minor matrices if your Hessian matrix is of four by four you will have h1 h2 h3 and H4 and so on. You always begin at the right corner, sorry, left corner uh, element and keep on proceeding until you have covered the entire square matrix. So that is how you find the principal minor matrices. Okay, so now once we know principal minor matrices, we can move. We'll start to look at what is positive and negative definite, positive definite and negative definite. If all the determinants of all principal minor matrices are greater than zero, then the matrix is positive definite. We looked at the principal minor matrix matrices in the last slide. Uh, there were three uh, for a three by three order of Hessian matrix, you could get three principal uh, minor matrices. If you take the determinants of all those three minor matrices, and if everything is greater than zero, then the matrix is said to be positive definite similarly if all determinants of prime uh, principal minor of matrix are alternating between negative and positive okay i have written negative first remember i have written negative first and then followed by positive then the matrix is negative definite you can also write this in mathematical terms you can say minus 1 raised to k into order determinant of Hessian matrix that is HK if they are greater than 0 where K is equal to K goes from 1 to N. In that case, the matrix is called as negative definite. So H1 should be negative, H2 should be positive, H3 should be negative, H4 should be positive and so on. If, uh, if you get a situation where H1 is negative, H2 is positive and so on, then you can say that the matrix is negative definite. So now, with all this understanding, now we can solve a problem. So you have this small problem. Find the extreme points of the function f of xy is equal to x cube plus 3y cube plus 3x square plus 3y square plus 24 and determine the nature of the points as well. So you have to find the extreme points of these functions and then you have to determine what is the nature of those points, whether it is a positive mark or whether it's a positive definite, whether it's a negative definite or is it a or uh, indef indefinite. 
uh, with that we can say whether it is maximum whether it is minimum or it is a saddle point so saddle point is nothing but your inflection point from which uh, the point at which it is neither maximum nor minimum how to solve this problem uh, it's pretty simple to solve we are just going to follow the same procedure we are going to start with the necessary condition then go to sufficient conditions now what are the necessary condition so first we use the necessary condition to find the extreme points the necessary condition is that the first partial derivatives with respect to each function should be equated to zero should be equal to zero so first we are going to find daba f upon daba x so if you take the partial derivative of the function with respect to x you're going to get 3x square plus 6x is equal to zero now we are equating it to zero now with this equation 3x square plus 6x is equal to zero we find the values of x so you have two values for x you can either x can take value of zero or minus two similarly now we you find the second derivative since there are two variables we are going to find the uh, partial derivative with respect to second variable so we are going to find df upon uh, daba f upon daba y so that will come as 9y square plus 6y is equal to zero so now with this equation that you have if you solve for y you get two terms for y so the y is 0 and uh, minus 2 by 3 so now what are the extreme points you can have x you can take x as 0 y as 0 you can take x as 0 and y as minus 2 by 3 you can take x as minus 2 and y as 0 and you can take x as minus 2 and y as minus 2 by 3 so you get four different extreme points so these extreme points are 0 0 0 minus 2 by 3 minus 2 0 and minus 2 minus 2 by 3 so we have four extreme points at each of these points we are going to find whether it is a maxima whether it's a minima or whether it's a saddle point so now the next step is we form the hessian matrix and then we find the principal minor matrix as discussed earlier hessian matrix is nothing but the matrix of your second order partial differentiations so we are going to find different second order partial differentiations we have daba f square upon daba x square which will be equal to 6x plus 6. We have daba f square upon daba y square which will be equal to 18y plus 6. Uh, I am also finding daba f square upon daba x daba y or which is also equal to daba f square upon daba y daba x which are both equal to 0. So now we have the second order differentiation and I am going to find the Hessian matrix. The Hessian matrix is pretty simple. The first term is uh, daba f square upon daba x square so that is equal to 6x plus 6 the second term is 0 next row first term is 0 last row is 18y plus 6 so this is your Hessian matrix now we'll start finding the principal matrices of this matrix so you uh, you can say this is a 2 by 2 Hessian matrix so there will be two principal matrices so h1 will be equal to a matrix 6x plus 6 just the first term on the left top corner for the next matrix you will take the next square that is the entire matrix so h2 will be equal to your Hessian matrix 6x six, six plus 6 0 next row 0 18y plus 6 so there are only two Hessian matrix now what we are going to do is we are going to find the determinants of these uh, principal matrices how are we going to find the determinants we are going to find determinants at four different points uh, the four extreme points that we found out in the previous slide each one we are going to individually find the values of h1 and h2 and based on that we're going to say whether it is a maxima or minimum to do that what i do is i draw a table so you can write in table format so that will be very easy so the table contains uh, about six columns in the first column i'm writing the extreme points and second column i'm writing uh, the value of determinant h1 in the second third column i'm writing the value of determinant h2 uh, i'm going to write nature of Hessian in the next column nature of the extreme point and the functional value in the last column so extreme points at first extreme point which is 0 0 the determinant gives me a value of uh, the determinant of the first principal minor gives me a value of plus 6 h2 gives me plus 36 according to a sufficient condition if both of them of all the principal or if all the determinant value of all the principal matrices is greater than 0 that means the nature is de positive definite and if it is positive definite that extreme point is a minima so this point 0 0 is nothing but a minima the functional value is 24 similarly now next point is 0 
minus 2 by 3. So what I get here is uh, I get the value of h1 as plus 6 and h2 as minus 36. Here I have written indefinite. Remember our condition was that for positive uh, definite everything should be greater than 0. For negative definite it should start with a negative and then alternate. So this starts with a positive and then goes to negative. So this cannot be a negative definite. This will be a indefinite. All right, so this is nothing but a saddle point. So the value is 76.9 at this point. The next point that is minus 2, 0. We are going to find that uh, if I find the values of h1 and h2, both are negative. If both are negative, then there is, it is indefinite. It's a saddle point and the value is 28. The next point is again minus 2, minus 2 by 3. The value of h1 is now minus 6 and the determinant value of h2 is plus 36 so this is nothing but a negative definite look at this you have negative first then positive so this is a negative definite so this point is maximum the value at this point is 76 by 9 all right so this is how you find the nature of the extreme points if suppose that your Hessian matrix was a 3 by 3 order you would have got a column of h3 here as well all right so if it is a 3 by 3 Hessian uh, matrix you will get three principal minor matrices so this is how you solve a uh, multivariable optimization by classical method uh, i hope you understand what i'm doing is i'm giving you two problems that you can solve home or uh, solve at home now these two problems are going to be a part of your assignments as well i'm sorry there's a mistake here it's not assignment five this is assignment six so these two problems are going to be on your assignment so these are find the extreme points a function is given again find the extreme points and determine the nature well nature as well another function is given so we'll stop here for this video this is about classical method this is how you're going to solve multivariable functions by classical methods in the next uh, video we'll uh, move on to uh, brute search methods and we'll solve them if you have any doubts, if you have any questions, queries, please write it in your YouTube comments. Uh, on those comments, in that comment section, I will definitely reply to your answers and will solve the queries. Uh, it becomes a productive section if a lot of people write their queries and other others can also reply to them what they understood and we can you know, learn from it. Uh, okay, so we'll stop here. Uh, again, I urge you to stay home, stay safe, do not venture outside uh we will cover the syllabus through this video session thank you